Well, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has officially entered the 2024 Republican race for the U.S. White House. And I'm running for president to lead our great American comeback. He released this campaign video after making the announcement on Twitter's live audio streaming platform that that event, alongside Elon Musk, faced major technical issues and had to be abandoned for nearly half an hour. DeSantis will take on his one-time backer, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump, as well as several other candidates. What critics of DeSantis say under his leadership, the state of Florida has become openly hostile towards people of color and the LGBTQ plus community. Mike Hanna reports now from Washington, D.C. Ron DeSantis had just turned 40 when he was first elected governor of Florida. Endorsed by the then President Donald Trump, he won by the narrowest of margins. But he was re-elected three years later in a landslide. Evidence of the massive conservative support built up as governor and an indication of the swing that seen Florida move from a toss-up state to solidly Republican. Because of our leadership and the folks in our state, uh, we've really become the beating heart of the conservative movement in these United States. Donation reimbursement scheme. DeSantis' policies have shifted little over the years as a member of Congress and governor. His dislike of big government was evidenced in his resistance to federal COVID regulations. A hardline stance on immigration and abortion is welcomed by many core Republicans. And he's on the front lines of what has emerged as a national cultural war on everything from progressive education policies to entertainment. We do not surrender to the woke mob. Florida's where woke goes to die. But his so-called war on woke has potential downsides, particularly the governor's retaliation against entertainment giant Disney that criticized part of his education legislation as homophobic. He withdrew the company's tax breaks, setting off a legal dispute. And some Republican strategists believe it's something he may regret. I think that's a, that's a, that's a grave miscalculation uh, in the long run. Um, you know, the powers of, uh, of government should never be used to go after an individual com uh, company, right? Especially for political reasons. Uh, you can have a confrontation, uh, but to, to really call out and go after, I think is an overuse of, of, of his power there. DeSantis is likely to fight for the Republican nomination against his one-time backer, Donald Trump, who has come up with a demeaning nickname for his opponent. Yeah, and that's Ron DeSanctimonious. And you've been watching him fall. He's falling at record levels and we'll keep it that way. There are other candidates taking on Donald Trump for the Republican nomination, but at this stage it appears that only this Yale and Harvard Law School graduate has a viable chance. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington. Well, Adolfo Franco is a Republican strategist and he says DeSantis will have to distinguish himself from Trump amongst Republican voters. The fact is, to date, uh, none of the credible candidates for the Republican nomination have disagreed with President Trump in any meaningful way on any policy issues, and in fact have defended President Trump uh, with respect to the uh, political and uh, legal persecution that is going on, persecution that is going on in, in uh, New York and Washington and in Georgia. At some point, Governor DeSantis is going to have to uh, say things that differ with President Trump or certainly criticize President Trump more more fully if he hopes to get any traction. He is a governor. He's extraordinarily been extraordinarily successful. He's had a very distinguished military record. Um, he's had a, a good record in Congress as a conservative and, of course, was reelected in, in, in Florida. It might be trending red, but he carried uh, counties and constituencies in Florida that we haven't carried as Republicans in over 20 years. The problem is that the nomination is the primary process is decided by core conservative Republicans. And the vast majority of Republicans identify very closely, personally with President Trump. They're loyal to him as a person uh, in the first instance. And secondly, have a suspicion that other than President Trump, everybody's saying what they need to say, but President Trump actually believes it. And the other Republican candidates are merely stating things that they believe the Republican primary voters want to hear, but in their core are willing to compromise on those principles.